You're listening to The Brett Davern Show, live daily on Adobe Radio. If you have to go potty, stop <laughs> and go right away. That's ha- um, that's what he says. You having some moments this morning? <laughs> no, it's just the uh, the boy. He likes this show on PBS. Is Daniel Tiger? Mm-hmm. Is PBS PBS is public broadcasting service system service something? Mm, I think it's service. Um, yeah. So, do they have Daniel Tiger internationally? Maybe he's syndicated on something. I don't know. Was uh, Dora the Explorer PBS? No, I think that was Nickelodeon. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, there's this show for kids called Daniel Tiger. He's took over. Well, basically, he's uh, <coughs> Mr. Rogers, but yeah. he's a he's a tiger. He's a cartoon tiger, but he is Mr. Rogers. He even changes his sweater, takes off his shoes, mm. Prince Wednesday, the whole thing. But he's got a song that my boy is into, and it goes. If you have to go potty, stop and go right away. I just think it's advice we could all use. It's the Brett Davern Show! Brought to you by Nice Guy Digital on Adobe Radio. And recorded live. Yeah. In beautiful North Hollywood, California. While we're somewhere else. Well, recorded live. We were, we're live. <laughs> On today's episode, James Dewey's. He's the keyboardist from the Get Up Kids. His side project, Reggie and the Full Effect, is on tour right now. We're going to give him a ring. Catch up with him. And I think we're going to continue our conversation from a few weeks back about ghosts. Eh, I don't know. We'll see. I got some thoughts on lunch meats that I need to discuss as well. It's fair. It's your show. All right. Let's get to the guy who's graduated high school three times. That's me. Your new best friend. Yeah. Brett Davern. Listen up, everybody. This is our show. Thank you for telling your friends and family about our show and engaging with us on social media. We love you. If you'd like to shout out a friend or shout at us or with us, you can call the show toll-free, 1-888-99-IDOBE. The email for the show is bdsfans at idobe.com. Or, if you don't want to wait for us to read email, you can join the conversation instantly by texting us. Just put bdsfans at idobe.com into your texting where you normally enter a phone number, compose your text, press send, and it ends up on this iPad in front of me. Now... This show is not live live, but you can still text in about whatever we're talking about, and we'll read it when we get back in town. That's how it works. All right, lots of show to get to today, but before we get to all of it, let me tell you that the Brett Davern Show is brought to you by Cake Bams. Cake Bams is, listen, they're rice cakes. And I understand that when I say rice cakes, you might be going like, whatever, like eye roll, like rice cakes, dry, gross. Who likes those? They taste like packing peanuts. Here's the thing. Cake Bams? Delicious. If it's peanut butter flavored Cake Bams, they taste like actual peanuts. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're delicious, guys. Seriously, Katie and I would not let something onto this show or be putting our names behind anything that we didn't think was delicious. Cake Bams, they truly are delicious. They're organic brown rice cakes deliciously disguised in yummy flavors like vegan dark chocolate and sea salt or strawberry birthday cake. All the flavors are naturally gluten-free and Brett Davern Show listeners get free shipping on all of their orders, plus 10% off of your entire purchase. Woo! Are you kidding me? Just go to cakebams.com. That's C-A-K-E-B-A-M-S dot com and enter the promo code BDS, as in Brett Davern Show, at checkout to get the 10% off and to get free shipping. Check out cakebams.com and follow cakebams on Instagram for crazy good giveaways, other prizes, and to keep up with new flavors and all kinds of things like that. 
Hello, Boy Wonder. Brett, I've got a flavor to ask. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. So funny. Wow. Wow. Yes. What's up? Uh, can you give me more cake, Bams? Yeah. Yes. Yes. We will. We will get more to the studio. They're delicious. They're crunchy, mm. and savory sometimes, and sweet. It's the crunch. I think it's the crunch that does it for me. Mm-hmm. I like a crunchy snack, and they've got that crispity, crunchity quality. Hello, Matadocious. Hello, Brett. Hold on. There you go. You always forget to turn on my mic. <laughs> Hello, Brett. <laughs> Do I forget or? I quit. And hello, Katie LeClaire. It's National Fork Tine Appreciation Day. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you for watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast version of The Brett Davern Show. If you were listening live on Adobe Radio, you'd be hearing real music right now. Instead of this message, and whatever song this is. Sometimes the rules just won't let us play real music on YouTube or the podcast. It's not a big deal. Just putting it out there. Back with more show in a second. You're listening to The Brett Davern Show. With that other guy from that one show on MTV. Yeah, you know, Brett Davern on IW Radio. Hello? Hello? Is this James? This is James. How you doing? Hey, James. How's it going, man? I'm hey. Brett. Uh, that's Katie over That's Katie over there. Uh, from the Brett Tavern Show. Um, how are you? Are you driving? I'm driving right now. I'm in uh, uh, Georgia, about 70 miles south of Savannah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Jinx. You owe me a coat. <laughs> uh, where are you headed to? Uh, we're going to Charleston, South Carolina for a day off. Oh, cool. Cool, man. There you go. Yeah. I've always heard that Charleston is absolutely one of the coolest towns in America. Definitely like an up-and-coming, hip spot. And uh, it's a place I really want to try to visit. Have you been there before? I've played some shows there like uh, back, like, I don't know, over 10 years ago probably. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh... But my girlfriend Stacy and I watched uh, Southern Charm, that yeah. show on Bravo. Yeah. You don't have to tell me, and James. It takes, place, it takes place in Charleston, so we have a list of places that we need to go today. We have to go see Patricia's house. We need to go uh, <laughs> try a uh, different bourbon. We need to, like, there's a lot of things that we have on a list that since we were driving through Charleston, it was like, well, we need to stop and do these things. So I gotta, that's what we're doing. I got to tell you, Southern Charm is the most rock and roll and out of control thing you could have mentioned, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it just seems like it's white people with too much money and a lot of alcohol. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. my gosh. Uh, yeah, no, I watched that show, too. Um, Charleston also, it, it's just been on a lot of, like, travel shows lately. I think Anthony Bourdain was there recently on one of his shows, and uh, it's just kind of really up and coming. So that's cool, man. Well, enjoy that. Um you got uh, what should we? What? Where do we even start with you? I'm I'm looking at my board here and I'm trying to figure out where to even get going. Uh, you play the keys for uh, with the Get Up Kids. Uh, Reggie and the Full Effects got a new album coming out soon. Uh, my Chemical Romance, New Found Glory, are both on tour now. Where do you want to start? Well, my Kim's not on tour now. Oh, sorry. My, wait, New Found Glory is on tour now. No, what's Reggie going on? New Glory is. Um, but I don't know wherever you want to start. I mean, I've just I've been around for a long time. Yeah, you. I that. mean, you tell me. Let's talk about Reggie and the Full Effect because we just played them, uh, or you or them. Do I say them on the show? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we just played. Um, okay. Now I have to try to pronounce it. Now Il Peche, El Pe, El Peche, El Pesci. It's Fed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the wait, second wait, track wait, on the new album. The Swedish Fish. Oh, <laughs> there you go. It's Italian. <laughs> I got it. It's a, the, the first two songs go together because it means the Sniffy meets the Swedish Fish. I love that. There you go. Well, we just played that on the show, so let's talk about the new album, which will be coming out in February, and the album is going to be called 41. Is that correct? It's out. It's March. It came out in February. Yeah. yeah, it came out in February. 
And uh, how's it been going? How's what's the response been? Oh, it's it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Um, we uh, you know, we've been out for about two weeks now, just touring on it, and uh, we're having a great time. It's uh, you know, just a lot of driving. We started in Buffalo, then drove to Houston, and then drove from wow. Houston to Albuquerque, Albuquerque to Santa Ana, and now we're in Florida. So, oh my goodness, holy cow! How would you describe? Reggie and the full effects sound. I don't know. It's kind of all over the place. It's, it's, I don't have just one style of music that I like. I like a, a pretty much all styles of music. Mm-hmm. Evident uh, by how many bands you've and, been in. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's like, I've been studying it for a very long time. And uh, it's just, you know, I, feel, I feel like songwriting, you, you should never limit yourself to just one style. Like, you, you won't learn anything by writing one thing uh, over and over and over again. Like, you need to broaden your horizon and, like, try new things and, and listen to new things. And, you know, inspiration comes from a lot of different places. So sure. you never know. Sure. What uh, what are what were your influences uh, growing up as a young lad dreaming of uh, rock stardom or just being a musician in general? Who were you influenced by? Nick Rhodes from Duran Duran. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's who I wanted to be. I wanted to be Nick Rhodes. <laughs> um, and I kind of became Nick Rhodes a little bit with my camp. I had like eight keyboards and bleached blonde hair. And was mm. like feeling very Nick Rhodesy for a little while. But, uh, <laughs> no, but also, like, I, I was into Duran Duran and Def Leppard were my two bands when I was like nine years old. Yeah. And then got into like Descendants and Seven Seconds and Bad Brains and like. Mm. It moved into like the grunge movement was fantastic for me because I was in high school. So, um, but then also like into the hardcore scene and like uh, then it always been into like rap. But, but I'm more of a fan of old school hip hop than I am of the new stuff. Right, right. Yeah, me too. Me, the, me stuff, too. the new stuff doesn't make any sense. It's all everybody just raps about the same thing. You don't have anybody rapping about interesting things anymore. And it's all mumbles. I see, yeah. Yeah. I, well. I call that it. I kind of gig because I feel like that sounds like I wrote that. Like it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same uh, to me. And uh, man, I'm going to sound about a hundred years old right now. But to me, I, I do call it mumble rap. And I also think it, it it's all like the same cadence, even like just the same sort of da 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 software's out there now so anybody with a Mac computer can become a hip hop producer or a music producer. Yeah, or radio and, uh, host. Well, they call them, there's a whole bank of sounds that are just for trap music. That they're, they're like trap hi-hat, trap kick drum. Right. And everybody just uses that. Nobody's making anything new. Everybody's just copying everybody else. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a problem of just like everybody takes the easy way to like, well, and they feel like they did a ton of work on it too. Or it's like, you didn't design the sound. All you do is hit space bar on a keyboard and then like and you think you've done something like incredibly mind blowing but you really haven't like all you've done is just kind of take something someone else did and add your little two cents onto it but yeah then again, that's also like what our industry is well what is what is your process when you set out to make an album how do you start what's uh, what's i guess it's probably maybe not one answer or i don't know i mean what, what's the first thing you do um I don't know. It, it kind of comes from all different directions. It used yeah. to be getting off work at Pizza Hut with my friend Lance and going into the basement of my parents' <laughs> house. And I would just start playing drums and we would record it and then I would put guitars over it. Yeah. And then I would put keyboards over it and then I would start singing. But now it's really more like I just kind of come up with the stuff on the piano when I'm at my apartment, like tinkering around and then or playing around on the computer and then like kind of come up with a melody or come up with like an interesting like... Uh, rhythm part or something and then go from there it's like there's some songs that kind of write themselves and then there's other ones that take a little longer so you you you, I might start a part in a hotel in Cleveland and then finish it a year later in Buffalo yeah you and you generally start with the music and then add in lyrics later except for songs like the chick like the chicken songs and things like that those usually come lyrics first right Mm. okay all right I got you and Last thing, let me let's get you out of here on this. Um, I mean, you played in some obviously huge bands: My Chemical Romance, New Found Glory, Get Up Kids, uh, and now Reggie in the Full Effect, um, and touring and all those kinds of things. 
What is something? I mean, we always hear stories about like backstage shenanigans and hotel hijinks and all kinds of things like that. But what is something we'd be surprised to hear goes on backstage or between shows or or whatever? Like, is there anyone back there just like chilling out, reading a book of poetry or something? Or like, what is something that would surprise well, we us to know? We have, we have puppy daycare. What? Puppy daycare. <laughs> Puppy daycare. What is that? It's, we have our dog Lulao, and, and uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, there's the band, and then there's you know all the other bands on tour. Like everybody kind of keeps an eye on Lulu because we can't have her around the loud music because she's a uh, she's a Yorkie, so it sure. her little ears. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been surprised like, at the merch table. So really, like. No one's really backstage, especially when the weather's nice. People are outside, like, going running. And, you know, it's a lot different now than it was, like, when Gidip kids were first touring and, like, discovered we started, like, playing bigger places and we discovered that there was free alcohol. And it was like, oh, wow. But, you know, touring at 41 is a lot different than touring at 21. Right. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, I could could see that. Makes sense. Um, Let me ask you. So on the the show, uh, we're a morning show, and so we have these, like, sort of morning show bits that we like to do. And I got a, I got a line of questions. It's not really questions. It's more like this or that. And uh, it's supposed to be rapid fire. So just give me the first thing that comes to the top of your head. I'll, 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 you'll see how this goes. Um, okay. So we'll just go rapid fire, and then, and then we'll get you out of here and let you enjoy your drive and go find out all the cool things about uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Here we go. Um, James, coffee or tea? Coffee. Beach house or mountain cabin? Beach house. Hugger or handshaker? Hugger. Thanksgiving or the 4th of July? Ooh, 4th of July. Suit or sweatpants? Suit. Pearl Jam or Nirvana? Pearl Jam. Do you keep real butter in the cupboard, in the fridge, or leave it out on the counter? Both. (laughs) Both? Ooh. (laughs) Some that's soft for cookie baking, but then some that's hard for other kinds of things. I agree. Uh, pajamas are all natural. Pajamas. And last but not least, do you prefer fake Christmas trees or real Christmas trees? Fake. There yeah. you go. James, thanks for joining us. Uh, everybody, you can go <laughs> grab grab the album now. Reggie and the Full Effect 41 out now. Spotify, iTunes, all that stuff. Check it out. Uh, YouTube, all of the places, and also touring right now. Uh, James, where can people uh, figure out tickets and get all the info and everything about uh, touring and albums and all that stuff? You can go to like, uh, the Reggie website. should have it at rntfb.net or reggiethefulleffect.net. Um, also, go to Pure Noise Records. They have everything up, so purenoiserecords.com. Um, and then also like on... Uh, I have everything posted on my Instagram. Um, it's your buddy Reggie at uh, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're all- at, at your buddy. It's just at your buddy Reggie. Sorry, yeah. I it back yeah. Here, I'll, I'll do it for you. I got it right here in front of me. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna check out James on Twitter, it's uh, it's actually shit. Dewey says, Dewey says. which is funny. Yeah, that was given to me by Frank from my Kim gave me that. Uh, Twitter handle when we were in Australia. I love that. And I just kept it ever since. I love that. And then uh, Reggie on the Full Effect is on Instagram at your buddy Reggie. Reggie is R E G G I E. Thanks for doing this, James, and uh, safe travels. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. Have a great day. All right. Talk thanks. to you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. All right. It's coming. It's okay. <laughs> I like that you feel the need to fill the silence, and I don't. I know. I would have loved that to just be silence. It's okay. Mm. This is Welcome to the Black Parade by Mad Chemical Romance. Thank you for watching on YouTube or for listening to the podcast version of our show. We love you. If you were listening live on Adobe Radio, you'd be hearing real music right now instead of this message. Sometimes rules don't allow us to play that kind of stuff on YouTube or on the podcast. Just putting it out there. Back with more show in a few seconds.
IW Radio. You can listen to The Brett Davern Show anytime. Just search for it on your favorite podcast app, but especially the Adobe app for iOS. That song is a symphony. It really is. Like, I... Wow, it's been a while since I've heard that song. Yeah. Um, but sweet keys in the beginning. Man. Yeah, James rocking it out. Um, yeah, that song's great. It just becomes this like cacophony of sound at the end. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's great. I love that song. I forgot how much I love that song. Yeah, that's a good one. My Chemical Romance not touring right now. They are not on tour. It's true. Newfound Glory not touring. Right now. I loved Newfound Glory. Oh, yeah. yeah. My freshman year of high school. Oof. My poor brother. Well, I mean, maybe not poor, but he was really into like rancid at the time and nothing else yeah. but like hard punk rock. Uh-huh. And I was busting Newfound Glory out of my speakers. Yeah, Newfound Glory. Loud. Isn't it a Newfound Glory? Uh, I don't think so. Or was it? For maybe time? it was. Yeah. I think it was at first. A Newfound Glory. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Anyway, uh, thanks to James for being on the show. That was pretty cool. Everyone, uh, check out his album, 41. It's out now. Find it everywhere. Um, we played something from, we played, <laughs> what did you say it translates to? The Swedish Fish. The Swedish Fish. Uh, it's in Italian, though. Il Pesci Svizzi or something. It's whatever Sweden is in. Svizzi is probably, yeah, Sweden. That's what Swedish is. And Pesci is fish. So it's actually the fish Swedish. Yeah. Direct translation. I wonder if it's from the. I was going to ask him if that was from the candy or Wait, like something else. Swedish Fish, the candy. Oh, it's got to be the candy. What were you saying about their other album titles are funny? Oh, they are. Yeah, yeah they're really pull funny. Pull up similar. That was funny. Songs You Shouldn't Play at Your Wedding or something uh, like that was the name of. And this is Reggie and the Full Effect. Songs Not to Get Married to. These are Reggie and the Full Effect album titles? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, promotional copy is the first album. <laughs> <laughs> album title. That's clearly a guy who's like, I've been in the music industry for a long time. Yeah. And, and then poke fun at it. With 2005 this album was Songs Not to Get Married to. That's funny. 2008 was Last Stop Crappy Town. <laughs> There's a picture of a train on the cover. That's great. Uh, my personal favorite 2013's album release is No Country for Old Musicians. Nice. Nice. <laughs> and then they've got 41. 41. The yeah. most recent. Oh, that's good. I like also, that. the uh, last, stop cra- last Stop Crappy Town, the, t- the song titles are G, Smith and Ninth Avenue, F, E, oh, that's funny. Third Avenue, L, yeah. J, V. Like they're S- subway stops. stops. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Pretty great. I can't believe he said he drove from Buffalo to, where did he say? From Buffalo to Houston. Houston, yeah. Jeez. I mean, maybe fly and then rent a car there. That's a haul. Yeah. Now they got all that equipment, though. No, that's true. You know, if you're touring. I, I believe he lives in Buffalo. Hard to put a drum kit in the overhead. It's true. You know? <laughs> wow. Crazy. Um, Katie, all right. We can get into it. F- a few weeks ago or a time ago. I'm not sure when this episode's going to air, but <clears throat> we started talking about ghosts. Yeah. And then we kept it going off the air. It was a hot debate. And what I was asking you was, is that I think I know you well enough to know that you are a fan of uh, science. I am. And you like thinking about the universe as a physical, tangible thing. So like other planets and solar systems and galaxies and, and, uh, other stars, our suns that all have their own solar system and things like that. But that those planets, even though you can't see them or you can't through a telescope, but you know what I mean, even though you can't look up at the night sky and see all those distant galaxies, you believe that they're there or you know that they're there. Yes. And that if you could magically beam yourself there, you could put your hand down and touch soil and that it'd be real and there they are, right? And so I was saying, okay, so... You're someone who believes all those things, and believes isn't even the right word, knows that those things exist. Yeah. And then I was asking you that if those other planets exist in that way, in that physical, tangible, touchable way, then are there ghosts on those planets? I say yes. Okay. So ghosts are not just exclusive to the Earth. I say yes. They are not 
Correct. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> they are not just exclusive to the Earth. I agree with that statement. Now, do there have to be alien beings on these other planets in order for ghosts to then exist on them? No. Can ghosts from Earth go exist on those other planets in those distant galaxies? Yes. I like that you're just making up the rules for ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Get out of here, ghosty. <laughs> go hang out on planet L197BFL. Can ghosts exist in the space between planets? Yes. So ghosts can just be everywhere? Yes. Okay. All right. I mean, I think that that's the thing is like, so something that you were saying is like you could reach down and touch the soil. You know that these planets exist because they are made of rock. So therefore, they are tangible energy. Right? Or no, that's not what you said. But I made the point that you're like, uh, so I can touch. They're, they're tactile. You can actually, they're made of molecules. You can actually feel them. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so, but then you say you don't believe in this energy. Right, that a ghost. Yeah, not because really. Because you can't touch it, see it, taste it. I don't know. The ghost that it is not made of. It's it's that you don't believe in that energy. But then my comment back to you was that that soil that you can touch, the tactile thing that you can feel, is still just energy. Uh, Scientifically, all everything right. vibrates. Uh, everything. Okay. Uh huh. And so that vibration is energy. Mm -hmm. because it's moving but that's more of like a that's more of like a physical energy though and what you're talking about is sort of like an ethereal like energy that you because like because you can touch the soil you can probably i don't know maybe you feel the vibration and then that's you can feel the energy right but but, but the energy you're talking about you can't feel or maybe you can feel maybe that's you're just what not I'm saying, aware you of can. it yeah oh, boy it's kind of hard. When the answer can be anything you want it to be, then it's sort of hard to That's why it's great. argue about it. <laughs> well, let's take a break. Maybe we'll keep it going on the other side. I don't know. Oh, this oh. is freshman year. Newfound glory. My friend's over you. Thank you for watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast version of The Brett Davern Show. If you were listening live on Adobe Radio, You'd be hearing real music right now, instead of this message and whatever song this is. Sometimes the rules just won't let us play real music on YouTube or the podcast. It's not a big deal. Just putting it out there. Back with more show in a second. You can watch The Brett Davern Show on YouTube. Yeah, you can. Go to youtube.com slash Brett Davern Show. If ghosts exist. Yeah. If you believe in ghosts. And if you believe in this energy, do you believe that you have a soul? Yeah. You kind of have to, right? Yeah. I believe in souls. Huh. Do you believe in souls? I don't know. I don't think so. Huh. I'm not sure. What is a so how are you defining soul? The thing that makes you you. If you were to take a a a a, a you know they do like head transplants now. Yeah, go ahead. If you were to take a person's head uh -huh. and transplant it onto someone else's body. Uh-huh. They don't do head transplants now. What are you talking about? Wait, did I, I just skipped over you saying that like in this <laughs> fact. They don't do that. There's a German scientist who is doing what? that. Yeah. Dr. Frankenstein? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> there's a whole thing. What's the Metal Gear Solid? It happens in the game, but then there's <laughs> this whole... <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, so I'm going with you. Let's just pretend it's hypothetical because I don't know if that's really happening or not. I, I Listeners out there, let Brett know that this is A real. head transplant? 
Yes. All right. It sounds like science fiction, and it freaked me the F out when I first heard about it, and I was really upset about it because I felt like there's some sort of moral... I don't know. I felt really weird about it. I just feel like that. Wait, hold, now, hold, now you're sending me off on a whole side okay, but, tangent. Okay, fine. Then it's okay. Let's just pretend it's hypothetical so we can all move on. Okay, great. Because a head transplant, that means what? The eyes work, the mouth works, the nose works, the ears work, the brains work, the hair still grows. Like, what are we talking right, about Right, and here? is that where your soul is? What? In your head? Yeah. No, your it's soul's your brain, in your, your heart. It's your consciousness. What? This, this is the moral quandary. Uh-huh. Is it your consciousness that's in your brain, in your head, or is it in your heart? What are we talking about? What are, whether I, or not souls exist, whether or not souls exist. So you're asking me that if a hypothetical head transplant took place, would that new body have that soul, that yeah. former soul? Yeah. No. Well, Sounds like a horror movie. Uh, I don't know. Wait, if you can do a head transplant, then can't you just live forever? No, because yeah. the brain would still be aging probably. True. The brain controls yeah. everything. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. This is weird. I don't like it. Why would you need a head transplant? Uh, it was the person that he, the scientist, did it on. Uh, had a really advanced, extra difficult, crazy form of muscular dystrophy. Huh. So his his body failed him, but his brain worked fine. Did it work? I don't know. <laughs> well, I think we're gonna need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I can Google it. Wait, hold on. So I'm just thinking about this soul thing. I've never thought about that. You stumped me with this question. I've never thought about it. I think that I, the reason I can't have myself believing in ghosts is because I'm a very logical, sort of literal person sometimes. Totally. And I, I believe in the physical world. I believe in, uh, I shouldn't be using the word believe. I, 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 these. Trust the physical world? Yeah. And like the physical universe, like, do I have a soul? No. I think I'm just organic matter. The earth happens to be the perfect distance away from the sun. And there's water and oxygen and carbon and but what's the molecules thing? and chemicals that make me a person. I'm a, piece of, I'm a piece of meat. I'm a piece of organic matter that's able to walk around and talk. But what's the thing that makes you different from Boy Wonder? My upbringing. Your character? Your soul personality is derived from environment a lot of times, maybe. Sure, nature versus nurture. I understand what you're saying. I mean, a lot of but times. I mean, the, you know, there are certain traits that you're born with, you know, physically, and also just genetically, and yeah, yeah fine. Yeah, I hear you. But I think like personality a lot of times is comes from what you've been surrounded with. But then you hold on to that because why? What do you mean? Like that part of it, that personality part of it, that is your that is your soul. That's your soul? So a soul is personality? And beliefs and hmm. attitude and I mean, I think it's a lot of things. Yeah. But those are developed, right? So a soul is developed? Huh. No, I don't think so. That's like parents saying these two th- things that have the same genetic makeup essentially yeah are very different from each other Uh uh-huh so no you're not it's not like a your soul is not learned well i'm asking you i i don't know i don't i'm telling you my opinion yeah i think it is innate and then nature versus nurture has a lot to do with it your environment your your environment your upbringing all that stuff Uh how scarred your parents made you (laughs) yeah how much time you have to spend on a therapist's couch Right. It's determined by how many hugs you got after your first T-ball game. Right. I don't know. I just think that I I don't know. I I just think that like uh this all this stuff, you know, like where why we're here, why we exist, where we're going, all that stuff. Yeah. To me, I'm just like we're there's gravity and there's some sort of that's the that's the force of the universe that's holding everything together and you know, the Gravity, gravity sends these planets into orbit, which then gives us years and seasons and hot and cold and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I don't know. I believe in like energy, like we were talking about energy earlier. I believe in physical energy such as 
and I, and look, everybody out there, I'm just an actor, okay? I'm not. I'm not. We're not I'm scientists. Not, I'm not Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. But uh, I believe. So I don't even know if physical energy is the right way of describing it. But what I'm trying to describe is like the energy that is like inertia and centrifugal force. And if I like push you or pull you, like that sort of energy or explosive energy, like energy that you can. You can feel and you can see and you can like I, that sort of energy, like the, the the forces of the universe, gravity, even though you can't technically see gravity, but you can feel gravity for sure. Uh, but isn't that the same thing as ghosts? Well, see, you're saying you can feel ghosts, right? It's that you feel the energy of something you can't explain. Right, right. But I would say that's that, what I'm saying. I would say that the, what you're feeling, though, can be described as like fear. Though. But what if you feel it and you're not afraid of it? Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Is there a word for that? It's like know. like like susto, you know? Like is there a word right. that we don't know? Maybe another language? Hmm. What Maybe. does susto mean again? Susto is it has to do something the feeling of fear leaving the body or something like that. Or it's the feeling it's something about fear. Uh. I can't remember. I don't but I feel like I don't that, to look it up. that thing that like I keep saying presence, but it's not presence. It's like um, I don't know that that feeling I was trying to say the last time we had this conversation is a universal feeling. Mm hmm. And then you were saying that so is the smell of bread is a universal feeling. Well, it's a, I just well no. What I was saying is that everyone could kind of picture that or like know what it is or has experienced that same smell. So it's more of an I have had that experience. You were saying had the experience of the hair standing back on the back of your neck. Like everyone knows that experience. Uh -huh. I'm like, yeah, everyone's had that. But everyone's experienced fear as well, or hunger, or thirst, or you know. I love those things though. And right. so I think part of the reason why I w want to believe in ghosts and look like maybe I don't fully necessarily believe in like grandma, I don't know, standing in the corner going, eat your peas. <laughs> like that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But I like the idea that everyone has had that feeling and has experienced that. Um, I don't know. Just yeah. that that presence i keep going back to that word i don't want to use yeah. that word that's not the right descriptor yeah i don't know i think it's just easier for me to just think that there's nothing there and that all all that the universe is and the world is is just this like physical thing and yes i understand that if you start thinking about the universe too much your head will explode which mine is about to when thinking about it because i understand that like like where is the <laughs> I'm starting to feel very small. Like, like <laughs> we where, are. We're like, so like. Where small. is the universe? You know what I mean. It's everywhere. Um, and I, I, oh, I yes. understand that, and I, I know that your head will explode out there. But like, if we just take for a second, and and we all just sort of like admit that the universe exists somewhere, wherever it exists, this universe that we're living in exists somewhere, and these planets and all the galaxies and the billions of stars and all these things exist somewhere. Uh, then what I'm saying is wherever the universe exists, we existing in this universe, it, we are just physical, organic matter of this universe. Mm -hmm. And that's enough. It. Well, and that's it for me. That's that's enough for me. That's that's good. I'm good. I've I've to me, I've figured it out. But then where did we come from? Well, the thing is, is that I don't really want to know. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of us want to know. The best part of life is not knowing. I've, I've tried to explain to people for years. You don't want Maddie and Jenna to get together on Awkward. <laughs> you don't want Scully and Mulder to find, to the, find the truth. Yeah. Well, the X-Files starts with the truth is out there, right? Right. And everyone's always like, are they going to figure it out? And it's like, you don't want them to figure it out. Because then the your not, show's over. The not, well, that's one. <laughs> but two, the not knowing is more fun. Because you get to debate it and you get to talk about it and you get to like try to figure it out on your own and have your own thoughts. What I love is how you. The, oh, I'm sorry, I don't Go mean ahead. to cut you off, but what what you really need is, and what I think is important. At some point, you kind of have to decide for yourself what the truth is for you, like what you are like. All right, are you talking about? No, don't even go there. I'm not talking about your truth. No, I'm not. I'm saying that just 
<laughs> if if you decide, if you decide, uh, yeah, you're right. That was the wrong way to say it. But I'm saying that if you decide what you're going to believe in, yeah, and then just sort of have that as like a baseline, and then if someone comes up with a really great argument that can kind of push you in in a certain direction, then that's okay too because you're going to be presented with new information your whole life by yeah. people who either know what they're talking about or people who don't know what they're talking about. But it doesn't matter. You're going to get new information. But I, I just I do think there is a certain time in life when you kind of have to pick a baseline for yourself. Is that an age or is that a uh, experience or yeah. like what? Maybe a little of both. I don't know. I don't know. There is a there is a, a a you can get lost trying to search too much. Yeah, maybe. you can. And then you can get lost in the search, and then you know. Not that you should ever stop searching, but it's just, uh, you gotta, don't be obsessive about it, maybe. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I like it. How many people on the planet or in the universe uh-huh. are having this conversation right now? A lot. That's the best part. Yeah, a lot of them. I mean, we can all, does everyone in this room agree we can just nod? Uh, does everyone in this room think that there are aliens yes mm -hmm. right we all kind of think that yeah everybody it'd be mathematically impossible that, that there wouldn't be I mean, with right. all the bill if if we all accept as a fact that every star that you see in the sky is a, another solar system's sun and yeah. that there's planets orbiting around that all those billions of other suns that it would just stand to reason that there's other life forms out there whether they are single celled little organisms or whether they're full fledged, you know, beings walking around. We we all accept that as fact, right? Yes. Okay. Well, at least we've gotten that out of the way. <laughs> but it but are those other planets round, Katie? You mean like ours? Our planet is round. Or is it just flat and it's all just one big electromagnet that we all stick to? Mm-hmm. Oh boy, mm -hmm. that's a rabbit hole conversation. on YouTube. You can go down sometime, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> those people, those people are crazy. I'm sorry, I I have no problem saying those people are crazy. If you believe that the Earth is flat, I I don't I don't have an need to talk you. to you. I yeah. I don't. It's it is what it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if the Earth is flat, then why are bubbles round? That's all I'm gonna say. You blow a bubble, it's round. That's all you need to know, everybody. Are you good? Mm hmm Do ghosts, do you believe in ghosts? I think so. All right. But I'm still in the middle. I don't know. Yeah. There's okay. no way to know. I'm in the middle leaning no, but I hope everyone. I hope everyone understands, too, that like I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. No, I know. Or convince you of anything. I'm just asking. Know, I'm just the just, guy asking questions. Here's the thing. It's it's that it's this is exactly what it is. It is not that I believe in ghosts. It's that I believe in the possibility of ghosts. Oh, okay. You're agnostic towards ghosts. Yes. I'm a ghost a ghost gnostic. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag ghost gnostic. <laughs> I just you know I hear all these stories of people that are like, you know, one time I was in the house and it, it was dark and. I felt something and I looked into the window that looks out onto the driveway and then standing behind me in the reflection was an old Victorian lady, mm -hmm. you know, and I just go like, no, that's no, no that's nope. nope. That was your brain. Nope. If you want to tell me that ghosts are just some sort of energy and the room gets a little colder when they're around or like this is some sort of energy thing. I have an easier time going with you on that than, you know, Billy the kid was shaking my bed last night at the hotel. Yeah. That's all I'm Total say. agreement. So are you ghost Gnostic then too? No. 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 I mean, you know, I will say that I am open to everything. Everything. Yeah. I mean, everything. E.T.? Everything. What are you talking about? Is that a God thing? Sistine Chapel? Is that what you're doing? What are you doing? Uh, I am open. I am open to. Oh, I know what he's doing. <laughs> I am open to everything. 
Uh, all the things. So Brett, yeah, likes, I, Brett likes it all. No, I never close myself off completely. Because, I mean, that's that's incredibly narcissistic and egotistical yeah. of, of anyone to think that they know all of the answers and that they alone can solve it and that they are the, you know, the end all be all. It's like, no, no, no. Like, if someone comes up with a better argument or or ha- or not even a better argument, just can you know has an argument that convinces me of something, I'm I'm in. You know, I'm down. Mm-hmm. Down to give it a shot. That's all. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap, everybody, on another edition of the Brett Davern Show. Woo! Down the rabbit hole. Mm. These are the things that keep me awake at night. It's a good thing I don't smoke weed. Yeah, why? Oh boy. Well, I just I don't know. From you get real nervous from about those things. From everything I've been told, I might I, I might like I don't know. I try I if I tried it once, I might you might just find me in the backyard in the fetal position looking up at the sky just yeah you know i think out. that you should not ever do that yeah no i no i already know that about myself i've made it this long i'm not gonna start now <sighs> not that i'm against it by the way just for you yeah oh yeah. listen i don't care what anyone does out there do your thing whatever just don't hurt anyone and don't hurt yourself that's all i don't care what you do Where was I? I don't even remember. Say goodbye, Producer Katie. Goodbye. Producer Katie's on Twitter and Instagram at Katie LeClaire. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at BDAV. You can follow the show on any social media, including Facebook at Brett Davern Show. And by the way, people, if you've listened to this conversation, what do you think about it? Tweet us. Tell us. Let me know. Because I'm definitely not a scientist. Mm -hmm. Was I wrong about things? I'm sure I was. Tell me. Like, let's have a conversation. That'd be fun. Today's guest, James Dews. Dewey's? We didn't ask him. And also, Katie spelled it differently in both places that she wrote it on my board. But he can be found on Twitter at ShitDews Says. S H I T D E W E S D E W E A Y S. Oh, boy. Oh, what are we doing to the people out there? <laughs> are you on Twitter? I'm on Wikipedia. Let me spell his Twitter for everybody. S-H-I-T-D-E-W-E-S. E-E-S. But you're not on Twitter. Oh, are you looking at it on Twitter? I'm looking at what you wrote down as his Twitter (laughs) account. (laughs) Maddie, are you going to it? Somebody (laughs) find me! Somebody! For the love of God, somebody find me James' Twitter account so I can read it and give him a proper plug that he deserves. Let me plug his band's Instagram account in the meantime. It is at your buddy Reggie. James on Twitter is at S H I T D E W E E S S A Y S. Keep it locked to IW Radio all day for great music and shows coming up later. And once again for Katie and Boy Wonder and uh, Matadocious and James and everybody out there, I'm Brett reminding you to be kind and take care of each other. We will see you tomorrow unless this show aired on a Friday, in which case we'll see you on Monday. That was our show. Good night, (laughs) Patricia of Southern Charm. That's it for the Brett Davern Show today. But don't worry, they'll be back tomorrow on Adobe Radio Live, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific.